Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested and hope you all had a wonderful past week and long holiday weekend if you celebrated in the States here. Uh, and today I have a product show and tell, uh, a look into some gear I've been testing for the past month and a half, as well as a look behind the scenes at some of our own tested production and some of the things we've been trying out over the past couple months. And that'd be fun to share to wrap up this week. Uh, so lately I've been using and testing the the DJI mic system. It's the latest in a line of new wireless uh, microphone systems to, for content creators uh, that have certainly gotten more accessible over the years. Companies like Rode and uh, DJI have now made uh, microphones that you can plug right into your DSLR or even your smartphones for higher quality audio. And we've seen a whole evolution of these type of products uh, that, like I said, have made video production just a little bit more easy uh, to get into as well as improve the overall production quality of the videos that anyone can make these days. So today I'll be talking about some of the gear that we had been using in the past uh, as we shot, shoot not only in our studios but on the road, at conventions, and now increasingly at home as well. Uh, and some of the, uh, what I like about this DJI mic system, which offers a lot of similarities to things like the Rode Wireless Go, uh, but also some unique features and some really nice to have features as well. So uh, if you record video at home, if you're looking to make your own YouTube videos or do live streams and you use something like a mirrorless camera for your dedicated webcam, uh, you're probably not looking at using the built-in audio. I mean, you could use the built-in mic. It's there for a reason. It's gonna be sufficient for a lot of people's use cases, but uh, you also can spend the money to upgrade from that system. And one of the easiest upgrades you can make is maybe like a shotgun mic, something like this. This one's made by Deity. Uh, Rode also makes one that's very popular. I like this one. This is the V-Mic, I think D3 Pro, has local power. Um, you can adjust the gain on here and it just plugs in via this 3.5 millimeter TRRS uh, jack right into your camera if you have a, um, a, a, a jack like this, a headphone jack traditionally on a smartphone that has one of those, or most cameras do have a mic in or line in. And the quality of those mics are great. They're directional. Uh, they capture audio pretty well, whether indoors or outdoors. Uh, but if you're taking your video shoots on the road and you need more than one audio input, or if you're in a really noisy environment and you really need something that's the quality of a, a lavalier mic, well, for the longest time, they're also professional grade lavalier mics. So this, for example, is a Sennheiser Lav Pack. It's def definitely professional grade. It operates in like the, the 500 meg Hertz UHF spectrum and has a comparable uh, receiver, so transmitter here, receiver here, uh, and these are like the workhorses of production. We've had this uh, tested for a long time. We now have some Sonys that we use with the production cameras that we use in studio. Uh, these run off AA batteries. Most of the, even the Sony ones also off two AA batteries now. And because they're in that 500 megahertz uh, frequency, uh, they have very long range, they're really reliable, they're not gonna run into any interference with you know, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, um, but you, and you also have the option to, to swap out the batteries as you need on a long production day. But they are very expensive, and a lot of cameras don't have necessary XLR inputs for this. So like this camera is a Panasonic GH5, and even if you're spending the money to buy like a dedicated lav system to get the audio into the camera, you may have to buy this XLR adapter. And for this, that's Panasonic XLR adapter is like $400 in itself. So while very useful and it's just again like a workhorse for uh, professional productions uh, may not be right for home productions or people just getting started in content creation. Um, you're going to go through a lot of AA batteries as well. That's why we have rechargeables in all of our, uh, all of our dedicated mic packs. So uh, something we also experimented with and used for a long time was a small local recorder like this. Now looks very much like this Sennheiser mic pack, but this is a wireless system, and this is actually a local recorder. It does have a wired lob that you clip in um, to your shirt, and it has a pack here that looks very similar to a small wireless pack, but this one doesn't actually transmit 
any audio uh, wirelessly. It only records locally onto a micro SD card. This one's made by Tascam, uh, and it's the DR10L. We've had this also for years. Really reliable, it does uh, dual audio recording, so a second backup track at a different decibel level, so you can avoid clipping, runs off a AAA battery, and you can swap in a micro SD cards to record many, many hours of audio on this. And because it's not doing any transmitting, that AAA battery will last for many, many production shoots, although we also use rechargeables in here. And you can do uh, monitoring out. There is a headphone jack here if you want to monitor or plug this into uh, into a camera. But you're basically, uh, what you have to do with a, a system like this is you have to sync up your audio after the fact. If you're recording with your phone, you're recording with your dedicated camera, uh, you record scratch audio on that, and then you bring them into your video editor and use a plugin or manually, you can, can, can sync up that audio. It's also useful um, for many camera systems. They are limited to two mic inputs, so even if you're using a camera system, an XLR input system like this with two audio in, uh, there are times where we'll do video shoots where we want three subjects, where Adam might be in conversation with two separate people, uh, in which case we'll throw one of these Tascam audio packs on them and then do syncing afterward. Although sometimes there's some subframe uh, desyncing, so we'll have to go um, adjust that to make sure you don't hear any audio echoing, which can be really annoying. But this I've always had as part of my everyday carry uh, in my camera bag as just an, uh, a nice to have uh, audio recording device. It's come in clutch very handy uh, in our production over the years. And then moving from that, we have what I've been using over the past month and a half, which is this DJI mic system, which again, very similar to like Rode's Wireless Go system, Hollyland's Lark system, uh, and it kind of looks like you know DJI's take on uh, Apple AirPod case. So it actually has four components technically. There's this case, uh, which has a uh, battery inside that can charge the devices in here, as well as allow you to sync them. It's stores some accessories as well, but primarily it's three pieces plus the case. There's a receiver and there are two transmitter, two, two transmitters, two microphones in here. There's only one in the case right now because I'm actually using the other one to record the audio for this video that you're watching. Uh, and what you'll notice is that none of these are actually plugged into the camera because like that Tascam system, and like the Rode Wireless Go 2, uh, this can actually record locally on devices, which is something of a, a little bit of a sea change in audio production. I'm not sure if it was because of uh, patents or uh, regulation, but devices for the longest time were only record locally or only uh, transmit. Here, this DJI mic system can both transmit to the receiver as well as record locally on each of the transmitters themselves. Uh, they're relatively small, so I'll grab these out of here. Uh, this is the transmitter and this is the receiver. Uh, let's talk about the receiver first. So uh, the, you can see there uh, is a little of a bit of a, I don't sure, I think it's an OLED screen on here, but you see audio levels that are bouncing. So automatically, once I take it out of the case, it's been charged, it can see the levels of both of the transmitters, uh, and there is an indicator here showing battery life as well as local onboard storage. They're not micro SD cards, it's built in storage up to 14 hours for each of the transmitters, which is eight gigabytes uh, and you have that storage in half uh, if you're recording a backup track as well. And then uh, you can, there's a bunch of settings here which I'll show. You can you record a mix down into a mono track, you record stereo track if you want to do a level adjustment later, uh, as well as you can activate the local recording setting, uh, which is optional, uh, on this receiver itself. So a uh, use case for that might be if I'm at a convention and I snap this onto, clip this onto an uh, interviewee, uh, someone's shirt, uh, and it's powered on, I don't need to actually go back on to the device and press record on it, if I want that backup recording, I can actually do it on the receiver itself, which is a really nice feature. 
Um, this then plugs in to your camera or your phone a couple different ways. So there are two 3.5 millimeter jacks here, one for monitoring, so you can put headphones onto here, and the other for uh, 3.5 out right into your camera. So TRS connector, plug that in, and that would normally go onto my uh, Panasonic S5 that I'm recording with right now. Uh, right now I also have connected to it a cold shoe clip-on accessory. So you can see this allows it to clip on to uh, you know, a, a rubber band, um, or I can have, have a cold shoe on top of the camera, actually snaps right into the cold shoe and keeps it locked secure. And when it's on the camera, I can actually see then all the, the, um, the monitoring right on there. So normally I would be able to see the audio levels and I can confirm that it is indeed recording. Uh, but what's really nice is I can also pop off this cold shoe uh, mount and there are two additional mounts that it comes with that are housed in the storage case itself You can see them one is USB-C and one is actually a lightning cable one uh, Lightning adapter for iPhones and iPads. So for example, I will slide in this lightning adapter one Super easy. It's right here. This is something that's unique, I think, to the DJI mic system. If you're using the Rode Wireless Go, you have to go from 3.5 adapter to lightning. There's no dedicated plug-in lightning adapter. And then I can plug this into like an iPhone or uh, an iPad and it will provide a mix down. It won't use stereo, but a mix down of both of those uh, microphones into your camera app, your video app, or your third-party video recording app, uh, which has been really interesting, as I'll get to, because we've tried using this uh, in our productions in the cave. Um, but some other features, uh, so it's all USB-C. Uh, there are USB-C ports for charging, uh, as well as for data transmission. So if I'm recording locally on this transmitter, if I clip this on, and I want to get the audio off. It's not a micro SD card. Like I said, eight gigabytes on onboard storage. This plugs in over USB to my computer and I can easily just drag those files off. Now what's really cool, uh, one of the coolest features I think is that these also, all three of the devices, both the transmitters as well as the receiver, all work as uh, USB audio devices, essentially sound cards. So whether it's plugging this over USB into my laptop or plugging the receiver over USB onto my laptop, I can actually, in my computer settings, uh, select that these microphones as the audio input. So not only does this work as a field recorder, as a, you know, as a dedicated video mic, but it can also work as a podcast mic or a live stream mic. Uh, where I can clip this on or attach it to a lav mic, as I have here. There's a third party, this one's made by Shure that I'm wearing, uh, and I can actually have this be a live stream microphone without having to use uh, a secondary mic, or I can use the receiver itself and get, again, multiple inputs, um, which is really, really nice. And as Joey discovered as he was testing the Hollyland Lark system, one novel use case for a dedicated recorder is um, you can place this in different places. So if you're recording one right here and you're recording one yourself talking and you need scratch audio, room audio, you know, uh, working audio for a piece of equipment, you can actually plug this or place this around your workspace or have a secondary audio source and you can capture, you know, Know, ASMR style building sounds or get a scratch track that you can do some uh, noise reduction with after the fact. It just gives you a little bit of extra versatility. Uh, speaking of versatility, this allows you to clip it on to your shirt, uh, which is my least preferred way, it's the most convenient way to use this. So when I use this at uh, Star Wars Celebration convention or at Bricks by the Bay uh, a couple weekends ago uh, when I was interviewing subjects, Super easy to clip this on. If you want to hide it, it does come with a pretty strong magnet. So I can detach this magnet and I can actually then hide the mic on the inside of your shirt or outside of your shirt and not have it clip on, uh, which then doesn't have it kind of drag a little bit. Um, and there you go, you can hear that pretty strong magnet sound. Although I can't imagine that being easy, uh, easy to lose. 
Uh, battery life wise, they have about five hours of battery life, which we actually got to use in a full day of use. Uh, and the uh, charging case will uh, char give it an extra 10 hours per each device. So uh, it'll take about an hour, a little over an hour to charge from zero to full. Uh, but if you look at the battery, in battery indicator and you see you're getting low, you throw this in for 15 minutes or so and you're gonna get another hour or so of recording. So it's not a long time to to wait to recharge it um, and thankfully you know this is small enough that you don't need to have like a cell battery or a double-a triple-a battery in here uh, the charging case itself will take a couple hours to charge, so I just kind of leave it plugged in to a USB uh, wall wart when I'm not traveling with it, uh, but everything does fit in here very nicely and compactly uh, aside from this cable and um, the third-party lav cable. Uh, now, we don't do dedicated like microphone reviews, so we haven't done a thorough test of all the different um, third-party lav cables you can use. This one came from Shure that I bought on online, uh, watching a couple other reviews, and the audio quality I think has been fine, but it is a little bit on the pricier side at close to $70, and you can get a much cheaper one um, if you're uh, not so picky about the audio. Uh, but I did do some comparisons and testing uh, between all the different systems, so you can get a listen to that right now. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Once again, recapping what the inputs are, the first mic is a Deity shotgun mic plugged directly into this camera. Second mic is a Sennheiser wireless pack, traditional XLR, XLR pack plugged into the B camera. Third mic is a wired um, local recorder, the Tascam uh, recorder that's using a wired lav. Fourth mic is the DJI mic and that's just directly clipped on right here to my sweater. And the fifth mic is a second DJI mic, but this time with the Shure lavalier. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of sense of the differences in audio quality between the different systems. Uh, of course, the Sennheiser system sounded really great. I didn't do any audio processing after the fact, just adjusted some gain a little bit to uh, level things out, but no filters, uh, no equalizers uh, in the edit, so you can actually hear what the audio sounds like. Uh, but the shotgun mic, I think for you know a space like this, it's not very echoey. It's directional here. You know, it's it's uh, not high ceilings. A shotgun mic's gonna work really well, but if you want uh, a bunch of different audio inputs and you want both the wireless transmission system, meaning locally recording to your phone or camera, as well as being able to save a backup on the recorder, on the, uh, the mic itself, um, I thought the, uh, the system here the DJI mic system here uh, sounded really well with this Shure Lav. Now a little bit into how this has been integrated into our production, these mics haven't replaced the dedicated studio mics that we've been using with our Sony cameras. We still uh, love the quality of our professional grade mics, uh, but for conventions, from cases where I'm gonna to go to a convention just by myself or just with one other person, I need something really fast and nimble, um, this has been super useful and super convenient. I haven't had to uh, wire a lav up someone's shirt to, you know, to, to record them um, and just be able to clip this onto someone's collar or have them clip it onto their own collar and be able to remotely start a recording has been just really, really nice. And it's lasted a full several hours of convention use. Uh, DJI says the range on this, which operates in the 2.4 gigahertz uh, spectrum, is about 250 meters at max distance, but that's gonna be in you know, line of sight, no, no, no obstacles, not in a crowded convention environment. And uh, while I didn't have any uh, signal drops or any interference from Wi-Fi or phones nearby uh, when using this, uh, most of my use for this was really in a standard, you know, 
five to six feet, 10 feet at most distance uh, between camera and subject. So I'm not really stress testing the range of this system uh, and how I've been able to use this so far. Uh, but like I said, we've also tried using this in our build videos with Adam in the shop. And I'm sure you've noticed over the past two years, Adam's been taken to filming himself doing one day builds, doing shop infrastructure with an iPhone essentially. He has uh, two iPhones that he has in the shop that he has clamped onto uh, some lock line goosenecking that he can clamp on a different pieces of uh, equipment uh, to give interesting angles or put on a monopod and he talks directly to the camera using the front-facing camera it's kind of interesting it's like the camera is you the viewer it's a very intimate way of uh, doing a build video and we've been using the built-in uh, iPhone microphone for the longest time which has been fairly sufficient we do do some significant significant tweaking to the audio in terms of getting rid of some of the shop noises and filtering out your clangs here and there. Um, but we also tried the DJI mic system for uh, some builds as well. And something that's interesting was, uh, I'll show you some footage here of uh, audio that was shot, uh, that was recorded both with the local iPhone mic as well as the DJI mic. <sighs> So I'm just having to hand build this. I wish I wish I could find it. And if you know what it is, let me know. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna chuck this into the mill right now with my uh, rotary thingy. Don't mean to get technical on you. Uh, yeah, here we go. Alexa, what is 360 divided by 24? 360 divided by 24 is 15. 15 degrees per increment. Um, and I think it's clear that the dedicated DJI mic that Adam was able to clip on and just have recording and running essentially all day sounded better uh, than the built-in iPhone mic. But in our post-production discussions, after going through a couple of these edits, we ended up preferring just using the dedicated onboard iPhone microphone as opposed to having a separate piece of equipment, however small, compact, and seamless this was. And one of the reasons is just the experience of uh, the mic being in a fixed, dedicated location. So, you know, the way Adam shoots his videos, the mic's gonna be in a fixed spot, and you might see him walk around the shop and talk and then come back to the camera and talk to you, the viewer. And when he had the dedicated microphone on, his voice would be the same level the entire time and you'd lose the sense of space in the shop. You could hear him clearly if he was walking further away or had his back turned to the camera, uh, but Adam's really good at going back to the camera and talking to you. And the way these videos ended up being edited and the way they end up looking, you know, we actually like the sound, the spatial sound of the, uh, what it looks like and what it sounds like when Adam is kind of wandering around the shop space and then coming back to the camera and then maybe moving the camera and it gives a, it's a more intimate feeling to that type of build and the built-in iPhone mic seems to be good enough uh, that it's it's been sufficient enough for uh, our, our video shoots. So. Well, I'll be continuing to use the DJI mic system for my home shoots and for going to small conventions. Uh, I think we'll be sticking to the built-in iPhone mic for Adam's builds uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, but we'd love to hear your feedback and we're always on the lookout for different types of gear that can, again, uh, improve our workflow or just change things up uh, to test things out. Um, and hopefully this was interesting and informative for you if if you're looking for a microphone system for your own content creation and your own home videos. The DJI mic system isn't cheap, it's $330, uh, and the Rode system might be the way to go if you want a system that can record directly to a camera, transmit, as well as record locally, because they sell one that's only one microphone and one receiver, as opposed to having two microphones and receiver, which you're forced to have with the DJI mic system. Also, still recommend the Tascam DR10, if if you uh, just need a backup microphone and you don't need wireless transmission, if you just want to sync it afterward, this has been super reliable. Um, and so those are the different audio solutions that we've been using in our 
production. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions about the DJI mic system or uh, experience with it, uh, please post them in the comments below. But until then, happy testing, happy video making if you're a content creator, and we will see you next time. Bye.